1600. 1600. WWRL. New York. An Access One Communications Radio Station. And we're back. This is Dr. Fritz Gallette coming to you live from the studios of WWRL in New York City. Streaming on the internet at WWRL1600.com. And I am in the studio again. This is Dr. Fritz Gallette and I'm here with my co-host Melissa. Yes, you are. Yes, we are. Here we go again on a Thursday night live here. Live, we always say, because the lines are open, you can jump into the conversation. Oh, too. Yes, you're definitely, they're definitely going to want to get in on this one. We are alive. We've got a really interesting topic here tonight. What are we talking about, Melissa? We're talking about the psychology of being an entrepreneur. Do you hate your job? Do you <laughs> wish you could quit? Do you have a better idea? We think this applies to everybody. When you hear that entrepreneur is a big word for really someone who has thought of doing something outside of the box, someone who wants to create something new, someone who wants to start a business and really make a difference in their own financial lives by taking control of their financial life. And then they go ahead and do it. And, and the, then they do it. And they don't worry about where the money's coming from. They just know they're going to get it. I think there's something unique to being an entrepreneur. So if you're just tuning in, we are with Steve Bala and Blaine Carter of Action Burger Woo-hoo. and Biosapien Comics. Um, and also in the studio with us is Dan LaRussa and welcome, welcome. Ashley Spadali of uh, Limit Break Studios. And they have produced an animated series called Life After Pride. Yes. Right? Yes. What is Dan, what is Life After Pride about? Life After Pride is about this whole generation. It seems that uh, we've been nicknamed the Ninja Generation. We are in our high 20s, early 30s, and we have no assets, no career, no job. It's, it's pretty brutal out there. Our whole generation kind of got screwed. From the whole economy, <laughs> and uh, we we call it the rise of the man child, basically. Okay. A grown man. Rise of the man child. Rise of the man child. He's a grown man that lives at home, still gets pancakes in the morning made by his parents. You know, pretty much like, at age thirty, you should be out on your own. You should have your own apartment. This reminds me of that Matthew McConaughey movie. Oh yeah, right? and, and, and like wedding crashes. Launch? You know what reminds me of the most? Like Chaz from Wedding Crashes. <laughs> like that's that, that's right, like right. pretty much what the show is. But um, it's a cartoon series that pretty much spoofs different types of dysfunctions that stem from the economy that that, that our whole generation suffers so, from. So who are the characters in Life After Pride? Let's say, let's take a random okay. sample. Okay, yeah. Um, you got the main characters. You got one guy, Dave. Now, Dave is the manic depressive that lives in his grandparents' basement, mm-hmm. and he watches bad television all day. So all the bad reality shows that are out there, we're going to spoof through Dave's eyes as he watches these shows. Um, then you got his cousin, Chip, who is an addicted gambler. But he gambles other people's money, so he, he dresses up in a suit for no reason because he feels that he, stu- he studies Buddhism, mm-hmm. and he feels that people that wear suits always have money. So it's like the secret. Okay. okay. And, and yeah, so <laughs> very he, spiritual. Yeah, so he tells people that he's an investor, but he's really not. He's just using his dad's paycheck or friend's paycheck to gamble and make money. Okay. Then you got Buddy. Uh, Buddy's the alcoholic from the South, and basically he was born in a whiskey barrel. <laughs> so he's he's like you know he has a thing for alcohol. His parents were were brewers. He ended up burning down the brewery, so he got sent up to New York, and that's how he meets Dave and Chip. So he's an alcoholic. He's pretty pretty brutal on the show. Um, you have Angel. Uh, Angel is uh, the character that Ashley plays. She plays uh, one of these characters, and Angel is a school teacher by day and a stripper by night. Now now Ashley, you play a couple characters in this animation, right? Yeah. Okay. What now? What are what are your two roles here? I play Angel, which Dan just said, and I play Grandma. Can you can you give us a taste? Can you bring Grandma mm-hmm. Grandma the house? You wanna, I don't something know. she says we get back. Okay, cool. We're gonna get back. Okay. To that one. Um, now, what is it that made you, uh, Dan, get? You said, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a cartoon." Like, what? Where were you in your Where were you in your life when you said, "I'm gonna make an, a a successful, popular animated series"? Yeah, sure. Um, well. Th- Surprisingly, the uh, series, well, it's actually no surprise, it, it stems from real life. I was, I was down and out, I was living back home, and I had, I had some, a decent amount of money in the bank, and I said to myself, you know, I'm tired of, you know, feeling like a failure because, you know, I lost my career, and I lost a lot. In, well, what were you doing years. before this? Uh, I was working at a company in Queens. We were doing um, risk management, you know, uh, inspections on buildings, okay. facades, elevators. And, you know, I loved it. I loved my job. You know, so you get, you, I got laid off, and um, like I said, I ended up having to move back home. And then I said to myself, you know, I could either go to college, 
completely slump my life over or just get a job and keep working. So you didn't go to college? Uh, no, I dropped out. Okay. I, I never got a degree. Okay. Um, but what I did was I, I said to myself, you know what I'm going to take? I'm going to take this money. And the idea came to me that I'm a writer. I've always been around since I was a kid. I, I, I wrote a bunch of stories, and they're just in filing cabinets. I wanted to do something with writing. So I said, you know what? There's an idea I have that, ins that I'm inspired from my life for the, for the last couple of years, and I would love to tell this cartoon story. And I chose a cartoon because cartoons are limitless. And cartoons, are, I think, are the best form of expression, at least for me, because it, like comic books, you know, imagination is free. Like there's nothing to ground you in that reality because it is, it's not reality. It, it, you tell a story of reality, but it's completely, you know, it's its own dimension. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so what happened? You said you said I'm gonna I'm gonna start. Yeah. How did how did you go from not knowing how to draw to uh, okay. <laughs> developing no, no. an animation yeah, series? I, at first, it was pretty funny. At first, um, because you know, there's a lot of people listening right now who'd be like, oh, I'd love to do a cartoon, but I can't draw. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm right there with them. Um, I I knew that I had to hire artists, uh, but I was trying to do as I said. All right, if I could get did you draw? Can I no? Oh, I, I drew it like joking around, but there was no way that was gonna pass. Okay. Um, so you, you 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 have this idea about doing an animation, but you can't draw. It. Yeah, I I knew I had to assemble a team. So didn't stop you. Didn't stop you. Oh no, definitely not. Um, I just I just knew that like I said, all right, listen, you guys listening out there, he has an <laughs> idea, and I can't tell you how many times we people have those ideas and they don't have a certain skill set, but they stop, and you kept on going. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, thank you. It's just, it's you know you know what it is. I just um. We gotta bottle that. Some some people, you know what it is like. I I said to myself, you get tired of of not pursuing what you love and and not taking a shot. You know, life's a, to, to me personally, life is a gamble. You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow anyway. And if you have that strong of a passion for it, like like I love passion. writing. I, I, yeah, I love writing. I love cartoons. Yeah. I'm a storyteller. I that's what I want to do with my life. Okay, so you hired some artists. So I hired artists, and then I I said to myself, All right, I'm gonna try to do the animation. Bought the software. Not the best idea. Could not teach myself. That is extremely hard. You have to go to school for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized I need to get animators. So I went on Craigslist and was looking for animators. That took about two months until I found the right people. Mm -hmm. Once I got a team together, I said, all right, we're going to have the first meeting at the house. They came in. <laughs> I, in the I, basement. In the yeah. basement. I had a giant Board whiteboard. Room. Yep. Mm -hmm. in the, Ooh, okay, uh, so you had you had what? I had a giant whiteboard. Okay. Like a and big Oh yeah. You write on the dry erase markers and that kind yes. of thing. Yes, okay. and, and I mapped out how the show's gonna, how the show will be written, and I wrap, I mapped out how we're gonna have team meetings about the show, and then on the other side of the board, I divided. I said, now this is how the company is gonna flow. I'm gonna be CEO and president. This is who's the vice president. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, this you is give this department. A title, I like that. All right, so um, Melissa, some observations. Okay. Um, observations I'm making um, are actually coming. Also, I see them in the research, and I see it with both groups we have in here, and I know this of entrepreneurs in general that well, they can conceive of something, they have an idea, mm -hmm. they're very open um, and wanting and limber to go to those ideas. And once they get those ideas in motion, that they they don't say no. They actually they hit the obstacles, but they keep on going. Um, we are with Dan LaRussa and Ashley Spidali of Limit Break Studios, and they have developed an animated series called Life After Pride about 30-year-olds living in their parents' basement. That would and, never and happen. That would, <laughs> that would never Impossible. happen. Impossible. Now, but now where are you now, Dan, with with the animated series? You've created it. Here you go. Now what do you do with it? Now you've got this company. You've hired some animators. What What is Limit Break Studios now? Okay, well, Limit Break Studios, what we do is we freelance animation and custom graphic design. So let's say you had an idea for a show that you want to do or a pilot. We can produce it. Um, we do everything from... Character development to, you know, 2D animation, 3D animation. We do background work. Pretty much anything that could be done in a cartoon, we can do. So the business itself is, you know, we got very lucky. And uh, we did, uh, most recently, New York Comic Con in October. Right. And, you know, we picked up some clients. And it was just crazy because the whole journey with the show led us now to working with a very talented uh, legal team. And right now we are in the process of... Uh, picturing at major networks, and and this is all in the course of a year. And where are uh, you yeah. going to be at the end of this? At the end of 2013? Ah, uh, well, um, my expectations would be on television, but uh, if not, the company itself is you know still soaring. I mean, we're we're traveling all around the country this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to all the major film festivals and comic cons. Dan, you when we were in yeah. the green room, you ha there was another guy with you who's not with us now. Um, yes, that that's uh, my cousin Chris, yeah. uh, Chris Cavana. He's a co-writer of the show. And like Vlaine, 
like my ideas were good, but bouncing them off of Lane made my ideas stronger. And I, I know when you were talking to the Green Room, it felt like that too for you. Oh, that absolutely. Having another person with a positive attitude and a, a forwardness. Yeah, he um, my, Chris actually supported me right from the very beginning of this whole thing, and I'll be honest, having him on board with the show, like I'll come up with an idea for something, but like he he's got he's got a different talent than mine. He actually. He knows how to expand on things better than I do. Blaine does too. Like, like I'll, I'll write the script, yeah. like kind of like a skeleton of it, and come up with the jokes. But like, he'll add like ten more jokes and like a scene that I didn't think of. It's brilliant. Like, it, it's def- it definitely helps. Yeah, I when I came up with a lot of ideas for the burgers and the burgers that are named after Blaine's characters, he expanded on that too, and. We we bounce ideas off of each other all the yeah. time. Well, and, and I think that's part of the process that Marsha was talking about. Thank you, Marsha, by the way, for the creativity, enjoying the journey, and and that what's interesting about creativity. We've done shows on creativity that it, it you you can write something funny, but it's hard to be creative in a vacuum. And when you've got that other input and and mm-hmm. and other people throwing their their two cents, you just in, never know where things are going to go. Exactly, you may end up in Paris. <laughs> yeah, oh, it can. At the oh Cannes Film, Festi- Cannes Film Festival, Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> France. with with a with an animated series. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, with a with a movie that, oh, Melissa, that your oh, studio's produced. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I, did, I mean, I never thought we were going to end up in a studio filled with people doing all these. I things. never thought we'd be at Comic Con. We were at Comic Con this year. We'll be at Comic Con next Thor. year. We met. Yeah, <laughs> we met. <laughs> no, we met a bunch of people doing this show. This is awesome. It's it's it's. It, it becomes, I think what's interesting about being an entrepreneur is, like I said, you y'all seem to attract each other. And where you're saying you get, uh, Steve, you're saying Vlaine is great to bounce things off of. You've drawn in somebody, you you know what your partner is yeah. supposed to look like and, and what you need to in order yeah. to complete your dream. And I think you guys have a great synergy. Same thing with, with Dan, you're talking about your studio. You, you could see this finished, couldn't you? Yes. I I saw it, you know, before it happened. I just knew it's, this is what I want, and I'm, you know, you, you make the necessary steps to do it. That's pretty much all it comes down to. And did people tell you what you're going to make a cartoon? That can't happen. You don't even know how to draw. Yeah, it was, you know, there's a lot of negativity, but, but you notice it's because of the way the world conditioned. You know, people, you know, predominantly the majority of people out there, you were raised, get up, go to school, get a college degree, routine, work 40 hours a week. Put a down payment on a house, get married, and, and that's fine. You know that, that that's the majority of people out there. But every now and then, there's someone that says, you know what? But I don't want that. Like I don't want to do that. And you know, well, yeah. you're young yet. You may want. That. And some of the research <laughs> shows that the entrepreneurs can't stand that kind of routine. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? Yeah, uh, I can't stand routine. That's they, true. Uh, this goes around Facebook a lot now. That Einstein said, uh, insanity is doing the same thing over and over with and expecting a different result. So every day, if you wake up, go to your job, go home, go to sleep, wake up, go to your job, go to sleep, you must be insane because you're doing <laughs> the same thing and over and over and expecting a different result in life, but you're not doing anything to force that different result. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you know, stop the insanity. Do something different. Take a chance. Well, mm-hmm. if everybody did something different, we might have some chaos. Oh, good. We, chaos, we do. <laughs> chaos breeds, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, breeds good things. I'm thinking of Batman and the Joker. Now. I just, I was going to say the same thing. The Joker popped in my head when you said that. Yeah. Nerd alert! <laughs> nerd alert! <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, when you when you look at the general population, we do need all all personalities, and we need people who are interested in doing different parts of the equation. Because yeah, when you guys build your empire, you're going to want people who actually really love. And are reinforced by doing certain parts of it, but yeah, the entrepreneur is out there doing something that is not not having been done before. It's very stressful. It's very lonely. Um, you get a lot of haters, people that yeah. are being negative towards you. You guys keep on going, and we we need that. Okay. Amazing, uh, isn't that amazing? And yeah. and again, traveling the country, going to all all the. Uh, trade shows, the conventions, and we've met both of these groups, actually both of them out of the millions of people we met at Comic-Con, these two groups, Action Burger and right. Limit Break Studios, uh, really stood out. Inspiring. Inspiring, yes, about taking something and making an amazing business out of it. And so we must thank you guys for coming in the studio tonight. I think uh, we've got more material in the future to cover, so we've got to get you guys back on. Oh, thanks. Um, I know my psychological brain is going, wait a minute, as a professor, I didn't cover all the details in detail, but, you know, we'll do this again. And we'll put links to all this stuff. I, I, people should be visiting this, this restaurant in Brooklyn. And when your, your uh, animated series is picked up by that major network that we won't mention yet, um, <laughs> Thank you. look for it, Life After Pro.